Hello and welcome to Bristol Sport TV from Ashton Gate Sports Bar. In the next 10 minutes we'll bring you all you need to know about your favourite Bristol sports plus the latest on the stadium redevelopment. Well it might be a big weekend in store for Six Nations Rugby but here at Ashton Gate it's been all about the football as City play three games in just eight days. After a crucial away win at MK Dons on Saturday which saw them move further away from the relegation zone it was tempered by defeat to promotion chasing Brighton on Tuesday evening. Now tomorrow they head to Nottingham Forest as Adam Baker reports. Bristol City were brought back down to earth with a bump on Tuesday night as they were beaten 4-0 by Brighton and Hove Albion at Ashton Gate. Two goals in each half saw an abrupt end to City's three-game winning run, although in the league table they remain eight points clear of the relegation zone. This weekend they head to Nottingham Forest and the camp remains positive despite the midweek defeat. They're a very well structured side. I know Diggy Well was on my pro licence with me in Scotland. A uh, good guy. Um, and they've got a lot of players that, of course, are, are consistent in the cha at championship level. They're obviously in reasonably confident mood, but we are really. We shouldn't, we've got to see that as a blip, I think, and make sure that uh, we continue on that pursuit of excellence to try and, uh, to try and get the results we require. Hey, uh Went on a great run, um, and, they've, and they've had a couple of a couple of defeats in the last two games. So it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a strange one. I think Forest are going to be a little bit hurting like us. Um, so Saturday it's going to be a a massive game for both of us, really. Um, both coming off of the back of the defeat. Um, it could be a make that an open game, an exciting game. Nathan Baker is rated 50-50 to play after an Achilles problem. Meanwhile, Luke Ailing is back in full training following knee surgery. The match is pay on the day. Well, as City prepare to take on Nottingham Forest, their female counterparts welcomed Notts County to the Stoke Gifford Stadium on Tuesday evening. The match was all part of the team's pre-season preparations ahead of the new WSL2 campaign. And Willie Kirk was pleased with his team's performance against a top-tier side, despite the 3-1 result. The performance over the 90 minutes was really, really really promising you know we finished the game with three 16 year olds on the park so uh, we got we got an awful lot out of that game you know the, the intensity of the game was relentless you know from zero to 90 it was it was really really tough shift for them so yeah i, th I thought it was great you know especially when a couple of things went against them in terms of the first goal after five minutes but you know they dug in and, and gave a, a really good performance i felt over the 90. Well, as we mentioned at the top of the programme, Six Nations Rugby returns this weekend and Bristol Rugby ladies have no fewer than seven players involved in the tournament. And I'm pleased to say that we can welcome England captain and Bristol star Sarah Hunter as our guest this week. Thanks very much for coming in. I know it's a busy week as uh, you prepare to take on Ireland at Twickenham this weekend. Yeah, no, we're, we're thoroughly excited about it. We've had two away games, so it's nice to come back home and play in no better place than doing that at Twickenham. So we're itching up a bit to get out there. When you say it's uh, all very nice for England at the moment, uh, you're top of the table level with France, but just second really on points. I like to say top because <laughs> You're on the same points, it's just uh, those pesky tries let in against Italy. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've had two wins from two so far, which is really good to build momentum into the big challenge that we, we face against Ireland on Saturday. And, and we, like you say, we probably need to work on a few areas. Uh, we probably conceded uh, a few too many tries uh, against Italy, which we won't be able to afford to, to do against Ireland. So we, we're looking hard on how we put that right in training camp and in preparation this week. Well, I mentioned that there's a number of Bristol rugby players involved across the tournament, not least Claire Malloy, who you're going to be lining up against as your teammate. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. At Bristol, we're, we're quite fortunate in the amount of internationals we have across sort of the sort of home nations. And, uh, and Claire Malloy, I play in the back row with her at Bristol, so uh, and we have a bit of a, a, a good relationship there. So no doubt we haven't seen them for a few <laughs> weeks. So I'm sure there'll be a few words as we uh, cross paths on, on Saturday, no doubt. Yeah, I'm sure there will be a little bit of banter for you. Um, talking about your teammates, of course, Katie Mayton has uh, had a good performance and Izzy has been back in the England fold, if you like, and Amber Reid as well. It is a really strong base you've got. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. All, all the girls have made big contributions to the Six Nations so far and our Autumn Internationals. And uh, it's great to see the likes of Izzy and Amber come back. I mean, they've had a few injuries this season um, so far as well. So they're right back in the fold, back to back to where we know they can play. And um, what's really exciting, we've got Poppy Leach, an 18-year-old who got her first cap in Italy 
Italy and um, hopefully we'll be involved again on, on Saturday. And a big year for rugby as a whole because of course England are defending world champions and next year we see Ireland host the tournament, the World Cup. Yeah, I can't believe it's come round so quickly. I mean, it seems only yesterday that we uh, were lifting that trophy out in France. And I think it's fantastic that Ireland are hosting it. They always put on um, a great competition whenever we go over there and play. And they're a big rugby nation. And the fact it's just across the water makes it a little bit easier for us. And the women's game is now even more competitive. And we saw that at the last World Cup, uh, the Irish, Britain, New Zealand, Canada get into the final um, and things like that. So we know the games games growing and um, and I think after the, the sevens in Rio this year the exposure for, for women's rugby will be huge so hopefully that can can follow on next year out in Ireland and I think it will be the most competitive World Cup there there's been and if we look at the results over the last sort of 12 18 months I think I think you'd be hard to see where the winner will come but we're, our focus is ultimately to go and retain that trophy because no English rugby team, men or women, have uh, won back-to-back -back World Cup so that will certainly be a, a long-term goal uh, in, in not too distant far away but ultimately now it's about Six Nations and, and Ireland on Saturday. Yeah well very best of luck with that and um, we'll all be watching and supporting all of our Bristol stars if you like. Um, it's interesting that you talk about England defending World Cups because uh, last week we had Lewis Moody here at the stadium and uh, he talked about the possibility of defending a back-to-back -back World Cup. Of course the England men couldn't do it in 2007. We will wait and see if the women can. Oh, well we're doing our certain <laughs> best to do so. Well very best of luck this weekend. Oh, thank you ever so much. Up. Thanks very much. Well, from one World Cup winner to another, we welcomed Lewis Moody to Ashton Gate Stadium on Friday for the big sports breakfast. And afterwards, I managed to catch up with him. You touched in your speech about the importance of psychology and winning team cultures. Of course, uh, all eyes will be on Bristol. They sit top of the table by 10 points. And as we head into that all-important playoff system, any advice for them? Um, well, I'd probably say what I, what I did when we were talking earlier. You know, there was a team that I played against during my professional career. Uh, it was Wasps, and, and, and we beat them on numerous occasions in the league. But when it came to the playoffs, they, they really understood it, and it was about peaking for those last four weeks. It didn't matter whether you lost 50 0 in the run up to the playoffs, as long as you were, you were performing. Uh, when it counted and and they got it right whether it's resting players whether it's uh, allowing players time off to recover from their injuries in a long season um, I do hope Bristol Bristol get it right but um, the, the focus on on detail in those final games you know I think the teams that win if you look at Scotland you know a side that should have won some big matches recently but uh, capitulated just because they got the basics wrong under pressure um, for Bristol to come out, if they get the basics right under pressure more often than the opposition, then it'll be really simple, they'll win. World Cup winner and former England captain Lewis Moody talking to me earlier at Ashton Gate. Well, Bristol Rugby, they return to action this week after a week off and face the long journey north to take on fellow playoff contenders Yorkshire Carnegie on Sunday. Well, earlier this week, it was announced that Bristol Academy prop Ellis Genge has joined Leicester Tigers on loan. Genge, who represented England in the under-20s World Cup, will return to Bristol, though, in time for those crucial playoffs. Well now to basketball and the Flyers were finally back to full strength as they headed north last weekend to take on fellow playoff rivals Leeds Force, as Joel Osborne reports. The Flyers suffered heartbreak on Friday night when they travelled north to face their former Division 1 rivals Leeds Force. The team led by as many as nine points in the second quarter but Leeds cut the gap to just two at the half with a deep three on the buzzer. The hosts held on to a narrow three-point lead in the game's final moments before Cardell McFarlane beat the clock to send the game into overtime on his way to a joint game-high 23 points. A 5-0 run from Lees to start the extra period put the game out of reach as Bristol suffered their 15th defeat of the season, 91 points to 88. You know, it, it just comes down to that toughness to get the defensive stops, I think. You know, we let them score, I think, too easily throughout the five minutes of overtime, the last five minutes of the game, and it was always just too difficult for us, I think, to, to run our offence. Well, we let them score 80 points, it was 80 all, wasn't it, after four quarters. I think if you're going to let a side score 80 points, you put pressure on yourself uh, to win the game, and we just couldn't quite manage it today. Flyers welcomed back Tyrone Lee following his recent ankle injury, and Coach Burns hopes his return to the squad will help pick the team up heading into the final 12 games of the regular season. You know, we've picked ourselves up before, 
uh, from disappointing losses, from bad performances. You know, we've done that before and come back strong. So I'm sure we can do that again. We've got every confidence in the players that they can do that. Um, and, and, you know, that's, that's what we have to do against Sheffield. The team have a free weekend before welcoming the Sheffield Sharks to the Wise Arena on Saturday, March 5th. Tickets are on sale now. Head to bristolflyers.co.uk. And just finally, a look at the stadium redevelopment this week. As all of you will have seen that the lower seating deck is fully in place and the glazed boxes have been installed. For those of you that are slightly more eagle-eyed, the roof sheeting has been being installed this week. And next week we'll be getting in behind the scenes of the West Stand and I'll be joined by Chairman Martin Griffiths. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the programme. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a minute of action. In the meantime, have a great weekend of Bristol Sport.